welcome back to the 30-hour post-licensing course. We are going to start the sixth lesson, and we are going to talk a little bit about the actual closing process as a whole, all right? So this whole session or this lesson is going to be about the closing process and how it takes place, who's involved, what responsibilities each person has, and things like that. So let's start out with saying the first thing that I would suggest for you that you should do is check with your company regarding their policies and procedures regarding the closing, the required documents you have to have to get paid, the required documents the company needs to have to maintain for their records. All of those things should be in your company policies and procedures. If you are working for maybe a smaller company, a couple of you, there's only a couple people, you may want to talk to your managing broker to see what they feel or what their thoughts are. Other than that, you've got some different people that are playing uh, in this pool here. So let's talk about the first one is these brokers. Now, I'm going to list most of these together because typically they can all work simultaneously. But you've got the, these two that could potentially end up being this one. So if you are a limited agent, remember you are a listing broker and the selling broker on the same deal. As the listing broker, you may be the one that establishes the actual closing time and closing date. Now, typically that could also be the selling agent. It kind of depends on who ordered the title work. Did you go with the original preliminary title work? So the one that typically makes the initial contact to do the title is the one that might set up the closing and the time frame. Now, one of the things the listing broker will have to give over is they're going to have to give over the BAC because typically that's one of the only things that could be listed on the MLS sheet, but the title company usually will not go out and look at the MLS sheet. So the listing uh, broker knows that he got 6% and gave 3% to the selling side. So he may have to tell the title company, hey, when you do the commission split, it's going to be a 50-50, 3% to each. Okay. The other thing the listing broker is going to help is when the seller comes to the table, the listing broker needs to remind the seller to bring all of the stuff that we normally don't remember. Keys, garage door openers, you know, that was an abbreviation. Maybe there's shed keys, maybe there's extra keys, garage door openers, any kind of uh, security codes for the, if there's a security door on the garage, anything like that, the listing agent needs to remember that they need to ask that for the seller to bring, all right? The selling agent, one of the things you might want to remember to bring to the closing is the seller's disclosure form that you originally got and you sent a copy back with your offer because you're going to want the sellers to sign this at closing. Now, the copy will be at the title company, so there are times when the title company can, can hand you that and it can be signed by the seller again in case you forget it. But that's another issue. The other thing the selling broker needs to worry about, and believe it or not, this is one that people forget all the time. When do you take your for sale sign up? And I guess we could go back to the listing broker that they may also have to remember when do they take their lockbox off because the listing broker cannot take his lockbox off before the selling broker wants to do a final walkthrough. So you need to remember that. All right. As a limited agent, obviously you are both of those, the listing and the selling broker. So you may have to end up doing both sides of this deal. And what I mean by that is you're going to have to remember to take the lockbox off and then go back and get the for sale sign. Now, the cool thing is if you're a limited broker, you may be able to do both of these at the same time. All right. 
but you still got to remember all of this. You got to remember to tell your clients also to bring their ID. You wouldn't believe how many people I have seen show up without their driver's license. Typically, older people. And that's because, hey, I haven't had to show my ID in 30 years. I'm 60 years old. I don't even know where it's at or it's buried deep in my wallet. Um, that, that was one of the cool things. Uh, I've worked at bars before. I've owned bars before. And the Alcoholic Beverage Commission came in and they were teaching a class. And one of the things that they taught, uh, and it's once again, it's not true, 100% fact, but it is very kind of obvious is people that have their ID out front in their wallet are prepared to show it. So they're trying to show, maybe get away with a fake one where somebody that looks a little, that's older may have their ID tucked way back in the back of their wallet because they haven't had to pull it out before. I don't know how true that is, but that was always the, the concept that the Alcoholic Beverage Commission used when carting, look for little tricks like that. So that's the role of that. Now, there's also, you got this person in here. What's the role of the title company? Obviously, they are there to coordinate the closing. That's their biggest thing. So they want to coordinate the closing. And now in that, they have got all kinds of other things. Um, that's obviously not how you spell that. Coordinate. Yeah, close enough. So they're going to go out and get the payoff for the seller. They're also going to run all the liens. They're also going to do searches uh, for lawsuits. They're also going to figure up um, the closing disclosure and give numbers over. Sometimes you will see the mortgage broker do this as well. Actually, more often than not, the mortgage broker will actually write the CD, but the title company still has to kind of give numbers over to them. And then obviously at the closing, their biggest job is they actually run it. All right. I often tell people in class, let's go back to this. I often tell people in class, if you guys have done your job correct correctly as this at the closing, you're going to be useless. <laughs> I know it sounds funny because typically they, the closer is going to sit at the head of the table. The clients are going to sit next to them and you're going to sit down on this end of the table and you're going to be talking to the other agent here like, Hey, so have you been watching Ozark lately? Yeah, well, that's a pretty good series. Oh, oh, we're done. Okay. Thank you. Because that means you discussed all of the forms and they n had no questions. So typically I tell people jokingly, if you've done your job correctly, you're going to be kind of useless because the title company will take over and do all of the signing, all of the collection, all of the checks, if there is any, uh, anything like that. And then they will then come back and disperse all of the funds. They will transfer the deed to the buyer. The buyer will reach up and take it and away you go. All right. Now, the last person in this group that you may have to end up dealing with is the lender himself, especially if you're the selling agent who's dealing with the buyer. The lender has a role in this, and one of their biggest roles is I think they will compile this closing disclosure and get it out to the buyer. Now, remember, that's a three-day process, and that three-day process can never be circumnavigated. There is no way to pull punches or pull favors or whine and moan and bitch and cry when the, it's got to be three days for the lender to look at that to verify. All right. And there's no way that we, you know, we used to be able to go in and say, Hey, can you push this up a little bit? And the title company could do that. Now, because the lender, and in here we're also going to write mortgage broker would be another person that might be involved in that. So these people all have a vested interest in the closing, and depending on which one of these you act like, it's going to be 
your job to have certain functions that will be delegated to you. And then at the end, you're going to collect your check and everybody's going to go off and be happy. All right, hold on. We're going to switch over to a new file.